Oh boy, here's another completely moronic article from a statist making excuses. Sorry, libertarian anarchists, capitalism requires government. If you say that capitalism requires government, then what you're literally saying is peaceful interactions between people require someone to forcefully intrude on them. It's a complete contradiction. It's from Harry Benswanger, and that's another name that sounds like it should be an expletive. I defend laissez-faire capitalism using Ayn Rand's objectivism. Well, there's your problem! As it says next to my picture, I defend laissez-faire capitalism. Anti-government is the term leftists use to smear this position. Except it's not a smear. Government is aggression, and capitalism is about removing aggression from our lives. And amazingly, some calling themselves libertarians are indeed anti-government across the board. They argue for what they call anarcho-capitalism. Yeah, people actually being consistent and applying their ethical principles universally. How amazing. Free competition works so well for everything else these anarchists say, why not for government services too? But that argument comes from an anti-capitalist premise. Say what? Like the Marxists who prayed about exploitation and wage slavery, the anarchists are ignoring the crucial, fundamental, life and death difference between trade and force. Uh, I think that's you, Sunshine. You're the one wanting to use force to intrude on trade. Marxists claim that capitalistic acts use force. And they're wrong. They're voluntary interactions. Anarcho-capitalists claim that acts of force can be capitalistic. Oh, we do not! Kiss my hairy Benzwanger! Though they come at it from different directions, both ignore or evade the fact that producing and exchanging values is the opposite of physical force. Just what is it about producing and exchanging values that you think capitalists are against? We're in favor of any voluntary interaction. Just don't forcefully intrude on anyone else's voluntary interactions, and we're good. Production is the creation of value, and trade is the voluntary exchange of value for value, to mutual benefit. Force is destruction, or the threat of it. It may be the destruction of a value, as when a hoodlum throws a rock through a store window, or it may be the destruction of destruction, as when a policeman pulls a gun on that hoodlum and hauls him off to jail. But in either case, it is the opposite of wealth creation and voluntary trade. Force properly employed is used only in retaliation, but even when retaliatory, force merely eliminates a negative, it cannot create value. The threat of force is used to make someone obey, to thwart his will. The only moral use of force is in self-defense, to protect one's rights. All of this is perfectly true, and it's in line with anarcho-capitalism. But you are the one saying it requires government. You're the one saying it requires a policeman or a regulator or someone else to pull guns on people to stop them from interacting peacefully. The wielding of force is not a business function. In fact, force is outside the realm of economics. Economics concerns production and trade, not destruction and seizure. Actually, economics covers all human interaction. It's as much about examining the wealth destroyed by force as it is wealth created by production. Ask yourself what it means to have a competition in governmental services. It's a competition in wielding force, a competition in subjugating others, a competition in making people obey commands. That's not competition, it's violent conflict. On a large scale, it's war. But the violent subjugation part is not the part we want competition in. We want that eliminated entirely. It's only the services themselves we want to compete. Let us have competing power companies, competing water companies, competing police services, competing court systems. Let us decide what forces we want to pay to protect our homes and our country from aggressors. The shootout at the OK Corral was not a case of competition. No, it was a case of gun control gone horribly awry. Whoever said it was a competition? Why all the straw manning? Maybe because you can't respond to what anarcho-capitalists actually say? Governments are necessary because we need to be secure from force initiated by criminals, terrorists, and foreign invaders. 
The conclusion does not follow from the premise. There are many other ways we can protect ourselves from criminals and other aggressors, but you want a state to do it. But that state, far more often than not, ends up being a criminal or terrorist organization on its own. In the 20th century, governments killed 262 million of their own people, not counting wars or capital punishment. The number of private murders in the same time period? Just 9 million. The genius of the American system is that it limited government, reining it in by a constitution. With checks and balances and the provision that no law can be passed unless it is necessary and proper to the government's sole purpose, to protect individual rights, to protect against their violation by physical force. Yeah, that lasted, what, 30 seconds? And then Washington, at the behest of Hamilton, was sending 50,000 troops to put down people protesting the whiskey tax, the very kind of tax they just finished fighting a war to stop. Tragically, the original American theory of government was breached, shelved, trashed long ago. But that's another story. No, that's not another story! That's the point! Stop being such a binswanger! The anarchists do not object to retaliatory force, only to it being wielded by a government. Why? Because they say it excludes competitors. It sure does. It excludes vigilantes, lynch mobs, terrorists, and anyone else wanting to use force subjectively. Wow. Really? We come up with a logical, objective foundation for the non-aggression principle, and you just say it would be done subjectively? Any DDRO that operated that way would soon find itself losing customers because no one wants to put up with that kind of uncertainty. Oh, but I suppose the state isn't subjective at all. Yeah, the law just means whatever a bunch of politicians arbitrarily decided to scribble down on paper, but that's not at all subjective. So they can write down that you're not allowed to have a small piece of vegetable matter, but that's not subjective! Give me a break. 66% of Americans, two-thirds, support legalizing marijuana, and government still won't do it. What if that 66% could take their money elsewhere and say, we don't want to pay for enforcing that stupid law? How long do you think it would remain on the books then? There can only be one supreme law of the land and only one government to enforce it. There shouldn't be any of either one. State and local governments are necessarily subordinate to the federal government. Well, somebody hasn't read the Constitution. Try the Tenth Amendment. Could conflict among competing governments be taken care of by treaties? Treaties enforced by whom? Wow, you really can't think of any other way of doing this. You do realize that these kinds of agreements happen all the time in the business world, right? Where do you think we got things like the USB standard that allows us to buy things like cheap drives and plug into any computer made in the reasonably recent past, regardless of the manufacturer or even the country that made it? By the way, any part of this that mentions Ayn Rand will be ignored as anything she ever said should be. Sorry, but yes, she said some good things, but there were plenty of other people saying the same things, and they don't have all of the bigoted anti-intellectual baggage you get with her. Sorry, but I prefer to get my philosophy from someone who doesn't make exceptions for the people she happens to call savages. Silly me. A proper government functions according to objective, philosophically validated procedures as embodied in its entire legal framework, from its constitution down to its narrowest rules and ordinances. Uh, let's just move on. To carry out its function of protecting individual rights, the government must forcibly bar others from using force in ways that threaten the citizens' rights. Private force is force not authorized by the government, not validated by its procedural safeguards, and not subject to its supervision. Yeah, this is where you get things like gun control. This idea leads to tyranny and no other direction. People who have read actual philosophy, as in other than Ayn Rand, know that anyone can use force in defense of themselves or others, and any number of people can band together for their mutual protection. Frederick Bastiat said that the law was the collective organization of the individual right to lawful defense. The only legitimate action government can take here, then, is the same kind of mutual protection, but it cannot stop others from forming their own. But that's exactly what you want to do! 
The government has to regard such private force as a threat, i.e. as a potential violation of individual rights. Government is the potential violation of individual rights, and it never takes long for that potential to be realized. Read the Bill of Rights. Notice how it keeps restricting government, not private organizations, because that is who you need to worry about here. The threat of force is force. In barring such private force, the government is retaliating against that threat. But simply having the capacity, or in your words, the potential to violate rights, is not the same as a threat. But those scribbles on paper absolutely are, because they state under no uncertain terms that if you have a bit of a certain plant or arrange flowers without a license or whatever, they will use force against you. That is a threat. Note that a proper government does not prohibit a man from using force to defend himself in an emergency when recourse to the government is not available. It does when that person is defending himself from an agent of the state. In fact, that's when they go at you the hardest. No matter how aggressive the cop was, no matter how justified the defense, you're now a cop killer and you get no sympathy. You get shot and killed on sight. But it does, properly, require him to prove objectively at a trial that he was acting in emergency self-defense. Uh, no, it doesn't. If you're defending yourself, you have to justify it to nobody. You're only defending yourself in court on this matter when you're falsely accused of being the aggressor yourself. Similarly, the government does not ban private guards, but it does properly bring private guards under its supervision by licensing them and does not grant them any special rights or immunities. They remain subject to the government's authority and its laws. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Government can give itself all the special rights and immunities that it wants, even though none of the rest of us can do that. Government is just a group of people. So where do they get this ethical justification for doing things that would be unethical for anyone else to do? This is basically divine right of kings, only without the kings. And he says they cannot make their own laws. Right, and that's a good thing. It's a bad thing the government can just make up whatever crap they want and that's the law, like it's some divine incantation or something. They write some words down on paper, then go through all the proper rituals, and it becomes the law. In fact, of course, there is no conflict between individual rights and outlawing private force. Except, of course, that you have to inhibit individual rights in order to prevent individuals from contracting with that force. But details, details. There is no right to the arbitrary use of force. Well, then how does government get that power? If it's something that none of us can do on our own, then how can we possibly give government that power? This is what he does over and over and over again. He ignores the contention of anarcho-capitalism that nobody should have the right to the arbitrary use of force. Not even if they put scribbles on paper and call themselves government. People only have the right to defensive force. There should be no arbitrary force in society at all, and anyone, whether they have the proper religious accoutrements in the form of a badge or not, have the right to defend themselves or others against anyone who is initiating force, even if the initiator is wearing the religious garb. The issue, then, is how are political and legal disputes to be settled, by might or by right? by street fighting, or the application of objective, philosophically validated procedures. Well, the last thing the government uses is objective, philosophically validated procedures because they don't have an incentive to, because they're a monopoly and people don't have any real way of holding them accountable. So they can steal from you and call it asset forfeiture. They can invade your home and kill you and call it a search. They can pull you over because your car doesn't have a small amount of electricity running through a red-colored semiconductor in the rear and then shoot you for resisting. No force that behaves that way could ever last in an anarcho-capitalist society because who on earth would keep paying them? And how would they last against an armed populace who has every right to resist? The anarchists object to the very idea of a monopoly on force. That only shows that they cannot grasp what force is. Force is monopoly. To use force is to attempt to monopolize. The cop or the gunman says, we'll do it my way, not your way, or else. 
There is no such thing as force that allows dissenters to go their own way. The difference is, with anarcho-capitalism, everyone is on equal footing, so the would-be rape victim could shoot a rapist in the face and stop it cold and be perfectly within her rights. But if the rapist has the special badge commended to him by the high priests, then she's a cop killer and any other cop gets to kill her on sight. Notice how he refuses to deal with any of these issues. Economic competition presupposes a free market. A free market cannot exist until after force has been barred. That means objective law backed up by a government. Then, again, why are all the documents made to try and preserve a free market, like the Bill of Rights, restricting government action? Because in a free market, force just isn't profitable. And it's highly risky because, without the special religion that gives its members divine rights not bestowed on the rest of us, there is nothing stopping someone from fighting back. And in a country where everyone has access to the technology and the ethical validity to use a firearm in self-defense, then at least the victims get a fighting chance. No 200-pound thug is any real threat to a 100-pound woman who has just one pound of metal to even things out. But what you want is might makes right, where a special privileged few have the power to run roughshod over everyone else. And yet, he laughingly says, In terms of current events, anarchism means Lebanon, Somalia, and the Taliban. Even though those are all examples of governments fighting with each other, determining who gets to oppress everyone else. I hereby nominate a new word. A binswanger is someone who ignores every bit of the other side's arguments and pretends that none of the problems with his side exists, so he can arrogantly pretend to be superior to them when he isn't. To all the binswangers out there, I say, your time is over. This information is too easily accessible now. No one who spends more than a few minutes researching it will fall for it anymore. And to the rest of you, I say thanks for watching this video. Thanks especially if you watched using the airtime extension so we both can get support for our time and effort. If you'd like to support your favorite content providers and make a bit of change for yourself, just go to airtime.bogosity.tv and download the extension. Or go to donate.bogosity.tv to support in other ways, such as donating through PayPal or crypto, or becoming a regular supporter on Patreon or Subscribestar and get my videos early. And of course, share those videos around to everyone you know. That helps more than anything. Until next time, stay strong and be free.